I'm going to be an elder orphan later in life, meaning I will be silver and solo with no adult children to help me. Now I'm fulfilling that role for my parents right now. I'm an adult child and I live very close to my parents and I look in on them and I'm at a text or a call away when they have a problem that needs solving. But who will do that for me? Well, stay tuned and find out about my go it alone plan. Hi, I'm Jen. I make videos about my life and adventures as a 50 something silver and solo pre-retirement Gen Xer. And this is my perspective. Before I get started with my plan, I wanna tell you that the Canadian government has an aging in place checklist. It's online and I've put a link in the description below. And the UK and the US governments also have similar websites with similar checklists. It's a really good resource, you should check them out. Number one on my plan is where to live. It needs to be somewhere without stairs. I have bad knees. I was lucky enough to already be looking for a place for my parents to move when they relocated from Ontario to British Columbia. It was quite a move for them and they wanted somewhere that had one floor, no stairs, was small enough for them to look after on their own and they wanted a new build in a community where they would have some supports in place. You see, they were thinking. As it was, the little community that I found for them was just being built in phases and the next phase was just starting and had new houses and lo and behold, I could buy a house. So I bought one. I actually live in the same little community as my parents. I live four doors away from them. Lucky for them, also lucky for me. My house is 1200 square feet, three bedrooms, no stairs, Small backyard, but fenced. Enough room for a garden, a patio, a little space for the dog to run back and forth, and not a lot of lawn to mow. There's a good amount of privacy, but also my neighbors are very close. The community is a gated community, and it has a clubhouse for socializing. When I first got here, I volunteered for the Strata Council and worked there for one year, so I know almost everybody in this little neighborhood. Since then, I've volunteered for other events within the community, and I also write, edit, and publish the community newsletter. It's also close to walking trails through the forest and along the river. If you've seen any of my Can I Get This Channel Monetized videos, you'll see that I end with a dog walk each time, and that's where I live. It's wonderful. And I'll never have to downsize. This is the perfect size house for me. It has all of the amenities close by. It's exactly what I need to age in place. Number two, transportation. Now I live in the country, which I love, but while I can go for walks with the dog and for my soul, I can't exactly walk to grocery shopping or pharmacy or to health services. I need a car for that. I take comfort in the fact that I have a 92 year old neighbor across the street who still drives, as well as my own parents, both of whom are in their mid eighties. All of them drive, all of them safely. So I can sort of count on that, but I'm not guaranteed to have the same health that they have. So I've looked it up and there are services within this community, the greater community that I live in, which are volunteer led and provide transportation services for seniors to medical appointments where they will drive them there, wait for them while they're in the medical appointment, and then drive them home. That's kind of perfect. It's by donation and definitely an option for me. There's also a city bus. It takes a while, but it will take me anywhere I need to go. And it's not far walking outside of my little gated community to get to the bus stop. Of course, there's always taxis as well, but planning to pay for transportation is going to be one of the things on my list if I plan to stay living in the country. Number three, building a support network of family, services, and community. There may come a time when I will need help with a whole range of tasks. Laundry, cleaning, cooking, grocery shopping, personal care, household maintenance, gardening. The good news is that the neighborhood that I live in has a very helping spirit and everyone looks out for one another. For example, on the rare snow days that we get, Everyone who is willing and able grabs a shovel and trudges outside to start shoveling their own drives and walkways, but also neighbors' drives and walkways. 
If you're unable to shovel your own walkway or your own driveway, all you have to do is step outside and wave and someone will come over and they'll shovel it for you. And when I hurt my knee a couple of years ago, one of my neighbors came right over and offered to walk my dog for me. The dog's a little bit too young and excitable for my parents to walk, so it was a godsend that this neighbor came over and just volunteered. She came over every day for pretty much the entire time that my knee was out, and she walked the dog a really good walk every day. I've also had neighbors help me put up my garden shed and mount a new television in my living room for me. Neighbors rock. Most importantly, on the family front, I have my brother and sister-in-law and three nieces. I'm close to all of them and I plan to maintain that contact. And in the end, if push came to shove, I would be willing to move closer to all or one of them in order to keep my independence. Number four, social connections. Now as an introvert, I'm lucky. When it comes to establishing or maintaining social connections, I don't need a lot of them, but I do need them. So for me, having my brother and his family close by, as well as wonderful neighbors, and social connections that I meet just in the community, that is enough for me. Social connections are important as we age, even for introverts. Facebook and other social media apps are great for keeping track of far-flung friends and family, maintaining relationships, and keeping that connection that you need. Number five, health and legal concerns. I probably should have started with this one, but keeping healthy, staying active is one of the most important things you can do as you age. And I know it doesn't look like it if you've seen some of my walking videos with the dog, but I do get a lot of exercise. I walk her twice a day. I put her in my garden. I try. I mean, menopause was a bit of a gut punch. I'm having a hard time recovering from that, but I am trying. Living alone, I also find it difficult to cook for one. I find a lot of food gets wasted because I want to shop for the value packs, which are bigger and cheaper, but also I can't eat it all and I don't have enough space in my freezer to freeze it all. I'm finding that although it's a little bit more expensive, I rely more on deli-made prepared meals or frozen ready-made meals to go but it also ensures that I'm getting all of the various food groups that I need in order to stay healthy. And I'm not relying on fast food all the time. Another situation that I'm facing, which I'm not sure if other people are or not, Canadians definitely for sure, is that I don't have a family doctor. This is uh, an epidemic across Canada that family doctors are in very short supply. But there is a health center in the center of town and it is stocked with doctors and nurses. I've registered with it and I can make appointments to visit the health center. I don't get to see the same doctor every time, but that's okay with me. I make sure that I keep up with the regular tests and screenings that they recommend. And I also visit an optometrist and a dentist regularly. A couple of things I have not done, but which I must do, and I recommend for every Silver and Solo who will be an elder orphan like me, write an advance directive or a living will, and also an enduring power of attorney. A living will is a written document that contains a person's wishes regarding how they want to be treated if they're not able to give instructions or express their wishes at the time that healthcare is required. An enduring power of attorney gives me the power to appoint a person that I trust to handle my financial and legal affairs if I can't. As a Silver and Solo, these two documents are vital and should be revisited regularly. Six, finances. I made an entire video about my plans for my finances, what I was thinking about. You can view it up there. But also I started this little YouTube channel as an adventure and a way to stretch my brain, but also as an opportunity to maybe come up with another income stream for retirement. We'll see. Another thing about finances for elder orphans is that we may in the future need to pay for someone to help care for us. Either move in and live with us or come in daily or weekly and we will have to pay for that. So that means a lot of Silver and Solos will be working longer or not retiring at all. Something to also consider. 
Now I do plan to retire eventually. And I think that I have my financial ducks in a row, but it's something that needs to be reviewed frequently, at least annually, to make sure that you're still on track financially for your goals. And you, sh you need to have goals, you need to have a plan. Now, I don't want to have to curtail my plans for travel, but if I have to, in order to accomplish my plan for living the way I want to live, then I will. You can't be completely inflexible when it comes to your plan if things change. I mean, I want to live my golden years on my own terms, dictated by me and not dictated by sudden illness or financial concerns. Finally, number seven, safety. Now I feel very safe living in my little house, in my little community, in my little town. But if you're feeling anxious, I also made a video about living solo and thriving. So take a look at that and see if it might help you out a bit. Practicalities for safety as a silver and solo would be um, loose railings, fix those, stairs, perhaps relocate or downsize into a home like I have with no stairs, grab bars in the bathrooms, and home surveillance cameras inside and out, as well as perhaps a personal monitor. I know I have Amazon Alexa in every room in my house, and Alexa has a functionality called an emergency contact, where you can register with the app an emergency contact that if you are in need of help in your own home, you can say, Alexa, call for help. And the app or the device will call your designated emergency contact with a text and a phone call to let them know that you need help. Now, Google Nest, Google Home, has the same sort of functionality, but it can actually dial 911 or an emergency number designated by you. Amazon Alexa can't dial 911. But either way, both of those devices and the apps associated with them are a great idea for people living alone. Now, this is not an exhaustive list by any means. So I would love to hear in the comments what you guys think and any suggestions that you might have. And don't forget to check out the links in the description. Bye.